Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Tattoo Homewreckers, a podcast where we talk about tattoos, life, and everything in between. I am Callista, and this is Gaia. Hello. Um, Merry late Christmas to all of you who are listening. It's uh, the 26th today. Yeah, we're recording this the same day we're putting it out. We sure are. Life, chaos. And, you know, that always happens during the holidays. Yes. And we had some very interesting um, post-Christmas talks already, and we wanted to kind of share it with you guys. Christmas and um, how it has changed as adults and why it may or may not feel like Christmas to you now Yes, that you were an adult. Do you want to get us started? Yes. So um, I wanted to talk about the post-Christmas slash holidays, if you don't celebrate Christmas, um, blues that people usually get. Um, And honestly, I think a lot of people get them on Christmas Day. Like the moment you're done with the big hype in the morning, then it, you just hit this like crash like you yeah. had such a high amount of like dopamine and also stress and just everything is just the most yeah uh-huh. this time of year that then you come crashing back down and you're like okay there's that place between being like relieved that it's all done and then just also the sadness that it's all done the disappointment of not getting like the gifts that you yeah. had wanted because there's so much anticipation built yeah. up beforehand and stress beforehand that like to me it very much Normally after Christmas morning, after you're done um, unwrapping presents and stuff, it feels like I hit a brick wall. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's that dopamine kind of yep. withdrawal and that stress, either yeah. relief or build up. <laughs> so um, I had a realization yesterday morning. So on Christmas morning, mm-hmm. um, because there were a lot of things that are really big deal to me on Christmas that we just didn't do this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's partly because I am doing my best to step away from like, a very authoritative like role in my life where it's like this is how everything's gonna be this is what like the schedule all of that Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to let everyone else in my life be like equal players and bring like what they bring to the table but this means out of a 15-year relationship with my husband he is now also lost the same as me where he's like oh fuck I haven't had to worry about any of this and we had to talk about the fact that he um, doesn't know what to do and that he's feeling really lost. And I realize it's because like, I've just done it always. Mm-hmm. So he's never had to do it. And I don't want to do that anymore. And yeah. it, like, I'm realizing the older I get and the more that I'm stepping back, the more I understand that like, um, anxiety and stress that women are under, um, when it comes to holidays and no offense against men, I'm sure you guys, you know, do stuff. Um, but we know based off of all of the research that women do more. Yeah. And I mean, I just want you guys to hear us out because it is one of those things with like prior knowledge um, we've gotten to this point. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Guy has been, and if you listen to our podcast, you, I'm sure you have heard bits and pieces of not only just like them reading about the Gottman Institute, Gottman's, um, yeah, but fair also play. Fair Play. Eva Rodsky. Is, yeah, which is huge. And game so changing. Both, both of these very huge game changing like pieces of literature and info, information highlights the unequal um, like labor distribution mm-hmm. in the household, which is why um, this dynamic is very new to the both of you. Now. Yeah. Um, and and I, you just get a fucking front row seat. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's it is one of those things where like I'm just grateful that I'm I'm grateful to have a front row seat, honestly. Yeah. Because I'm not married, I'm not in a relationship. Um, but I feel like it will definitely help me in the future. Yeah. Well I think you said it this morning when we were talking about Christmas, like last year was your first Christmas. Without my parents, yeah. Yeah. And you realized last Christmas like how much work goes into it. Mm-hmm. And I jokingly was like, oh, is that because you saw me freaking the fuck out, like stressed out? And you're like, yep. Yeah, um, it is definitely one of those things where all the holidays, I said it this morning, too, um, that Christmas is not just a passive holiday. But then I realized all of the holidays, Mm -hmm. they're not something that you can just passively go about and expect the magic to come to you. It is something that you have to actively work on. It's something that you actively have to keep that flame and magic alive around the holidays. Um, And we've noticed that a lot of people have been saying, well, it just doesn't feel like Christmas. Which is what kind of like (laughs) catapulted me into this place Mm -hmm. is that like, I love Christmas. I love the lights. I love 
the whole hullabaloo. I love all of the traditions. I love hearing about other people's traditions. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I was explaining to Caboose, like, all these things that are a really big deal to me, I realized that, like, I had, like, told him, but I had not emphasized the importance of it. And it also made me realize that a lot of people don't know what they think is special for yeah. Christmas. Like, if <laughs> I, I asked Callie this morning, because I was like, I, you know, when we started talking about this episode, that... I am really, like, clear and concise um, Mm -hmm. that to me I'm like, okay, having a a really decorated house is a really big deal. Yeah. Having the, like, front of the house so that way there's, like, magic in the neighborhood is a big deal. Having cookies Mm -hmm. um, because, like, a family tradition we always did was we baked a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, We also always had, like, a – my mom made, like, a casserole for breakfast. We always had breakfast. And I remember one specific holiday where she didn't, which props to her. I, I remember being upset as a kid. But I also think she just reached her tipping point where she was like, fuck it, I'm done. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of women do reach this point. Yes. And we as family members, because we live in this ignorant place of not knowing the amount of work that goes into things, mm-hmm. that we're just like, oh, my God, why didn't you do that? Instead of being like, because I don't know, you did 117 other fucking things. And, and have been for years. Yeah. And right. you have been for years. And everyone, like, appreciates it, but doesn't step up to make the magic happen. Mm-hmm. So we were talking about the importance of, like, actually sitting down. So, like, we're going to have a family meeting where we all sit down and talk about, like, the important things for us around the holidays. So that way next year it doesn't happen, you know, to Mm -hmm. be December 24th. And we're like, fuck, we didn't go see the lights. We didn't bake cookies. We didn't do all these things that make it special for us. But that way we can develop plans and systems beforehand. Mm -hmm. But I think the first big step is, like, hey – what makes the holiday special for you? And especially because I was thinking about how when people get married, they talk about like, okay, do I want kids? You know, how are we going to raise our kids? Mm -hmm. What does your career home life balance look like to you? But the holidays are a really big deal to people. Mm -hmm. And like, that is not part of a conversation you have when dating someone or even like in our friendship relationship, we didn't sit down and I didn't go, Hey, what makes the holiday special for you? So that way I could show up as my part mm-hmm. and help make the holiday special for you. Exactly. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I think, I mean, the purpose of this episode is kind of to also, I guess, you know, get our listeners to ask themselves what they need to be able to make it feel like Christmas or Halloween yeah. or your birthday. Because well, even- you crushed Halloween. Oh, thank you. Well, Dude. that's uh, I, I do love <sighs> Halloween a lot more than Christmas, um, but that's still one of those things where like... It's just personal preference. Just because Christmas isn't that, like super important to me doesn't mean it's not super important to other people. It's the same thing with birthdays. I mean, Brene said it in her book, too, where she was upset at her husband for not like, you know, for she woke up on her birthday and she came down and there weren't balloons. There was no decorations. There was no like sign mm-hmm. um, with like happy birthday and stuff. And she didn't realize how important it was to her. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she was like talking to her therapist about it and she's like well if I have to ask for it then it's not special anymore and her therapist hit her with something like huge and it was something like well if you don't ask for it then like how do you ever expect to get it or something oh like that oh my god that. I'm still stuck I'm still on Brene's side of that of yeah. if I have to ask for it it's not special and I know that's yeah. a terrible place to be <clears throat> well it's hard because um, it's it's vulnerable A it's yeah. really vulnerable and B like it is so difficult when you ask for things and yet they still aren't delivered. Yeah. You know, which I think is like my, yeah, that's definitely my biggest place is where like we had that realization Mm -hmm. where I realized through this whole discussion that I was like, I am not actually that hard to love. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I'm really clear on it. I'm like, Hey, I don't like these things. I do like these things. Mm -hmm. This is a big deal to me. And I'm really, um, as Orna says, I go through the, go for the jugular with my language. So I'm very blunt about it. Yeah. Um, and then it doesn't happen. So then it makes me feel like, okay, so it's like, if I have to keep asking, then it's not special. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And so I think that's my thing is like, it feels like it's keep asking, but I think it's also important to have these discussions of like, Hey, what makes Christmas feel like Christmas to you? Like what some of your favorite traditions and then having those discussions within your relationships. Yes. Cause like you said, your family didn't make cookies. No, but I'm interested in that. I would love to do That was one of the things that Gaia said made Christmas, like, magical to her is um, that, like, baking cookies together Yeah. at one point in December. Um, 
whether that be like on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve or whatever, just like it's one of those at Christmas activities, you know, mm-hmm. and like I said, it's not a passive holiday and you can't expect it to feel like Christmas when you are being passive about it. Um, and that's not a family tradition of mine to bake cookies, but I would love that. That sounds like so much fun. I love that idea. What's one of yours? Um, mine was like a feast. So, um, having a big Christmas breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. Which is why, like, my body turned into a bottomless pit. It makes me so happy that you say that because I felt really selfish when I was Mm. like, well, having a big breakfast is a big deal. No. But then also, I expect Christmas dinner. And then I was oh, like, yeah. oh, my God, are you being selfish? Being like, no, Look, guys, it's breakfast, lunch and yes. dinner, bitch. It's yes. all it's like you're feasting all day. Yeah. 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 And you're constantly like, you know, if you're not eating full plates, you are still like getting mm-hmm. snacks throughout the day of those yeah. full plates. <laughs> well, I realized like that also that like I don't know about your family, but like my family has that like subtle or in Caboose's family. It's that subtle mm-hmm. sexism that like. For me, I want Caboose to also be involved next year of, like, baking cookies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because in his family, all the women would get together on, like, the 23rd, I think, mm-hmm. and then have cookie day. Oh, cute. So all the women would go over to his, like, grandma's house mm-hmm. and bake cookies. But then I'm like, but there's this, like, inadvertent, like, okay, so only the women are doing the cooking. Yeah. And, like, my family, it was the same, that, like, my brothers would help a tiny bit with cooking. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, like... A lot of Christmas Day was me and my mom in the kitchen all fucking day slaving over. Mm -hmm. And I think there's like the holidays really highlight that like. Yes. That inadvertent stupid gender roles of like, okay. whereas for me, I'm trying to actively break those where it's like, okay, so I want all of us to make cookies. Like Caboose loves baking and like loves cooking. And so So the idea of like all of us making these like meals and Mm -hmm. whether it be like, hey, we divvy it out so, like, one of us takes each meal or, mm-hmm. like, whatever, like, that looks like. Yeah. I think it's so important. But I also just think that, like, right now where everything is fresh in our brains, when we come down and we're like, man, I'm really sad that, that like, with that post-holiday blues is such a good time of reflection. Yes. Oh, my God, yes. To be like, how do we make this better for next year? Yep. To make sure that, like, next year we don't run into these pitfalls. Yeah. Because I, I agree, like, that's what pissed me off so bad is listening. To, and it was mostly men. No no offense to men. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was just mostly men that were just like, it just doesn't feel like the holidays. It doesn't feel like Christmas. And a lot of them, it was interesting to hear because it was like they had spouses um, that weren't doing as much this year. Mm-hmm. And it's like the more that, like, women are like, dude, I don't want to fucking die in this mountain of stress. Yeah. The more you have their counterparts being like, it just doesn't feel like Christmas. I'm like, well, then fucking pick up the boxes, wrap some shit yourself. Like, I mean, there or schedule stuff, yeah, you know, schedule activities to do and like actually follow through with like, you can't just like say, oh, we should do this and then never mm-hmm. like say anything about it ever again. Yeah. Like, if that's the case, then like make an active again, it's not a passive holiday, make yeah. an active decision to actively do things to make it feel like Christmas and like you know, pull the weight. And there's a reason why, like, I mean, studies have shown that the statistics for, like, successful dating for straight men right now are so down. Like, they, yeah, like, straight men are not having any success dating. And there's a reason for that. Because a lot of women are breaking out of the matrix and being like, no, you know, actually, I deserve better. And we aren't just saying I deserve better and staying in these toxic relationships. We're actually leaving and or not getting into toxic relationships to begin Mm -hmm. with. Because to be frank, like if you're not doing the mental work, the mental emotional work, you don't have an excuse just because you're a man at this mm-hmm. a- at age or at this point of time. Well, it, I feel like that about technology too. Exactly. It kills me when people are yes. like, well, I'm just not good with technology. And yeah. like, dude, <clears throat> it has been around for so long. Yeah. That's no longer a cute excuse. No, it's you not. You can't say I'm not good with technology because you're in your 60s. We've had personal computers in our homes for the last 20 years. Yeah. So where the fuck were you in your 40s learning about this? And that's the thing, too, is, like, a lot of, like, men, and I've experienced this, too, like, dating um, or just, like, fucking around, where a lot of men my age will use the excuse of, like, well, I just don't know because, like, I don't know, like, how to get this information or where. Dude, you're on your phone for more than half of the day or your computer for more than half of the day. If you're not learning, it's because you're not surrounding yourself with people or accounts or following accounts that will help you pursue that information and that knowledge. 
And if you're wondering why you're not having any success at dating, maybe pick up a book written by a woman for once in your life. Um, or <laughs> I just had to like pull up my phone for this audiobook. Yeah. If the idea of listening to a woman narrate a book or, you know, reading a book that a woman, a woman has written mm-hmm. about, um, we'll say like straight relationships. Um, this is how your marriage ends by Matthew Frey is an amazing book. It is the mm-hmm. male counterpart book to Eve Rodsky's Fair Play. It's a good step into yeah, um, getting into this knowledge. Yeah. And it's he's very gentle with you to be like, hey, he will use I your language. It. Yeah, he'll use your language. <laughs> he'll speak like, your language. hey, I get it. You grew up with these very specific gender roles, Mm -hmm. but this is why, like, his whole story is about how his wife divorced him over dishes by the sink. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and everyone's like, what? That's fucking terrible. But the more that, like, Caboose and I do this work, and I'm not not saying it's easy. I know it's not. I literally spent Christmas morning on the floor of the bathroom crying over the fact that I'm like, dude, the reason this shit didn't get done this year is because I didn't want to do it. But I had to let us have essentially a bad Christmas. I say in quotations because it ended up being great. Yeah, yeah, you guys bounce back. Um, (laughs) But like you have to have those hard conversations Mm -hmm. to be able to then be like, hey, I understand that like we are different people from the ones. And I guess more accurately, we play different roles than what we played when we first got together. Mm -hmm. So we spent the first like 10 years of our relationship, if not more, really just playing into those gender roles of like, if you look at pictures of us, I think it's from like five Christmases ago when we were in South Carolina, I took pictures of us and I am baking and preparing for Christmas and Caboose had, he was spending time with me. So he brought his laptop into the kitchen and he's playing on his laptop as Mm -hmm. I am like slaving away in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And that was our idea of like, what a cute, beautiful moment. We're hanging out together but I am doing stuff of, of service of other people. Yeah. And you are playing a video game. Well, yeah. And those of you in like straight relationships, mm-hmm. long term or not, I hope you guys take this example and use it as like things can change. Mm-hmm. If you both decide to put in the work. And like you said, it's not easy. No. You have to have these hard conversations, yeah. these uncomfortable moments. When you have to be aware that I don't just turn to him and say, hey, you're the problem. Like, hey. We are, I'm asking you to play different roles than what we originally signed up for. Yeah, we were in the Matrix and now we're both trying to figure out who we are out of it and who we are as a couple out of it, which I can't imagine how hard that is. Um, But you guys seem to be doing great. I mean, Aww, thanks. You're welcome. It didn't feel that way yesterday morning, but by yesterday afternoon, it's not it always. Felt great. <laughs> it is not always going to feel that great, and that's yeah. the thing is, it's not. It is not always going to feel that great. That's part of the journey. That's part of growth, right? Yeah. Yep. It's part of realizing, like, oh, maybe it doesn't feel like Christmas because I didn't put in the work to yeah. make it feel like and Christmas. Like, for me, it was the <laughs> watching things fall to the wayside mm-hmm. and knowing that I could fix it, but knowing that if I did, mm-hmm. it would perpetuate this cycle. Yeah, perpetuate the system that you guys have always yeah. been in. Yeah, uh-huh. this very oppressive cycle that doesn't allow him to be a fully formed person and doesn't allow me to be a fully formed person because I'm too busy taking care of everyone else, Mm -hmm. but I'm not taking care of myself. And then it Mm -hmm. teaches him that nothing he does is of value. Yeah. That like, he can't do anything without my permission. Which I think is where, yeah, Yeah. where a lot of like men are, where they're like, well, I don't want to do it because I'm not going to do it right. And women are like, I may as well just do it myself because otherwise it's not going to get done right. Mm -hmm. And like, don't get me wrong. It's super frustrating teaching what in our brain is a full grown adult Mm -hmm. to like make a chore list. But also, how are we going to be pissed off when we literally never taught them we to do perpetuated, this? perpetuated, yeah. Like, his mother didn't teach him. Society didn't teach him. Mm-hmm. So, but, like, that being said, you don't get pissed off when you teach me something on InShot. Mm-mm. You don't look at me and go, oh, my God, you're a full-grown adult. Why can't you do this? And I just have to approach it like that of, like, look, he doesn't get pissed off when he teaches you the difference between an impact driver and a drill. Mm-hmm. So then I can't get pissed off at this. Yeah, I think that's that's my thing is like I have yet to not to like steer the conversation away, but I have yet to find a person who I will romantically be compatible with where I feel good about teaching (laughs) someone that. Oh, yeah. The people I fucked around with and the people I've dated, (laughs) like I just genuinely don't have the fucking patience with them because I'm like, you are you have access to the same fucking resources that I do. And I Mm -hmm. I think that's how I know I don't actually like there was no romantic potential. (laughs) 
Because oh. I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's still frustrating. And, like, yeah. having – we keep having that conversation because he bring Matthew Fry brings it up mm-hmm. – or Frey brings it up in his book where he talks about how – he's like, men, we have put people on the moon. Mm-hmm. So stop acting like we're dumb. If Love we it. want to do something, we can. Love that, yeah. And that's something that, like, Caboose and I would argue about that I'm like, dude, but if you want to do something, mm-hmm. I've seen you do ridiculously impossible shit. I've watched you invent things. Mm-hmm. So if you wanted to figure out how to do this, you could. Mm-hmm. And then him having that realization of, like, ah, oh, fuck, I've, like, weaponized my incompetence to a whole new level. Mm-hmm. That, like, he is now having to unlearn those things. And then I'm having to learn that, like, it doesn't need to be perfect the first time round. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then also, just like yesterday, like, I have to I have to let the ball drop. Yeah. Because that's how we have good conversations to be like, okay. And that's how we have these realizations of, like, holy shit. Like, I know everyone always says, like, moms are the MVP and all that kind of shit. But, like, genuinely, like- you remove, like, a mother from the holidays and see how much shit doesn't happen. Yeah. And yeah, that's the thing is like, sure you can say the uh, mothers are the MVPs, but we're out here drowning these women. Yeah. You know what I mean? Genuinely like, drowning in stress. And like, we're well, sitting I mean, here. Think about how decorated your mom's house was. Oh yeah. It's like, oh, it looks professional as fuck. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It does. And it's just like, goes to show all the, it's the, what they call like invisible work. Mm -hmm. um around that happens the invisible labor and like shit i mean this shit happens like everywhere it's not just like in personal relationships and it's in professional relationships Mm -hmm. it's in like it's in every pretty much every aspect of a woman's life of like if you are a woman you are just expected to do more Mm -hmm. and and once you aren't you're the problem and that's just shitty yeah i mean i if you ask a boost he can tell you how many times he's been asked to decorate a party yeah right it's zero no one's ever asked him to do it yeah absolutely and but i have done everything from decorate other people's weddings yeah to other people's houses other people's parties yeah yeah, yeah absolutely it's fucking it is hard and so i just i don't know i definitely hopefully this episode finds the right people and is a wake-up call to a lot of people because it there is so much unseen labor that's going on. And if the holidays don't feel like the holidays. It's probably because you're not putting in the work. Well, and I think it's because of that, like, that Santa Claus idea, mm-hmm. which is that uh, invisible labor of, yeah. like, hey, if it doesn't feel like the holidays, it's probably because you've experienced your holidays based off someone else's hard work. Mm-hmm. Um, and you didn't see it. And, like, once again, when it comes to, like, gender stereotypes – Partly our fault. Yeah. If you are indeed a homemaker who has done laundry in the middle of the night, um, waits for everyone else to go to bed before you clean, like all those things. Mm -hmm. It's and like I am guilty of that. I am guilty of like waiting. And it's partly because it's easier when no one's around. Let's be real fucking clear. Yeah. So it's not like we're doing it just to be like, oh, yeah, see, I never want anyone to see it. But that's the whole point of like being like (laughs) when you're raised as a woman, that's what you're taught is like, hey. I need you to do everything, but no one can ever see how hard you're working. Yeah, it which is. is where I break that stereotype a lot, which is why this morning she was mm-hmm. like, yeah, uh, I realized how much work went into it because she has to listen to me constantly be like, oh, my fucking God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's always so much to do. Yeah. And like, I mean, I, I'm freshly out of my parents' house. So this is like the second Christmas I've spent away from them. And it is definitely one of those things where, I, I mean, my first Christmas, I was like, holy fuck, like, I just did not realize at all how much mm-hmm. work went into this. And this Christmas definitely was hard, not just because of the, you know, seasonal depression that's been, like, hitting me harder than normal, um, but, like, I just haven't been feeling very, like, I, A, am in a pinch financially. I'm not, I'm not actually in a pinch. I have a really good <laughs> savings account. I just, like... It's a slow, it's notoriously slow for tattooers right now because everyone yeah. is spending money on their spouses or whoever and not spending money on themselves. Um, so, and I love gift giving. I think it's super fun. But this year I was like, fuck this. I was mm-hmm. like, you know what? Fuck this shit. I, the idea of like going out and spending so much money on people, I just can't fucking do it. Um, but it's, it's definitely odd, like going into a different dynamic um not in this family dynamic anymore of like okay well I was a child so like 
I wasn't really allowed to decorate to begin with. Um, just because my mom has like mild OCD <laughs> and her uh, house looks professional. Like if you yeah. saw this house, you would genuinely believe you were in like Macy's. Yeah. Like we're not, we weren't like allowed to place the ornaments on ourselves. Um, it was definitely like a solo thing, which is fine. You know, that's just like how she wanted it to look and yeah. everything's very uniform and everything's very like picture perfect, like literally like Macy's. Um, but like relearning these new dynamics of like, oh no, we actually do have to sit down and have these conversations of like, yeah, how important is this to you? And you know, what, what is our musts for Christmas and what is our, like, what are some things that like we don't have to do, but it would be nice to do. And what are some things that are just off the table? <laughs> oh my God. I love that. Yeah. Okay. So that is your task. <laughs> Homewreckers. Yep. Um, and you don't have to share, but you know, we love, we like, love the to interaction. hear it. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to see you guys like must have lists. Like it mm-hmm. does not feel like Christmas without, and then like, your yeah. would be cool list. Yeah. Would be cool. And then I think there's another really important list and it's the fucking hate it. List. Yeah. The like off the table, like you guys can do that without me. Yeah. Um, and I will not be offended in the slightest because I just, this is not something that I'm interested in doing. <laughs> yeah, I love that having yeah. like a just a three solid list. Three tier, yeah. So that way it's like, okay, because at this point, you know, it's in this day and age, mm-hmm. you can just fucking put it in your phone to be like, okay, so as of November 1st, start looking for yes. like X, Y, and Z holiday stuff. Yes. And that way it doesn't creep up because if you're anything like us, mm-hmm. it fucking creeped up and then we we're like, oh no, we didn't see the Christmas lights. Oh my God, And like yeah. every single year around holidays... We talk about going to to the haunted houses, to the corn maze, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Like all these like Halloween fall traditions. Yeah. And then we never do them because every weekend is full of other stuff because we forgot to plan it. No, exactly. Because that's that's the thing is like life does get crazy and mm-hmm. it will always be crazy, but it is specifically crazy around the holidays. Yeah. So if you already, you know, go into the holidays with like a solid like kind of game plan, very loose leaf like like, oh, it would be cool, you know, and then these are our must-dos. Um, I think that'll help a lot. Yeah. Recreate can, that magic. Like, <laughs> and here's the thing. Like, taking this approach for me today, because mm-hmm. today usually I am in the throes of seasonal depression. Mm-hmm. December 26th is one of my lowest days of the year, right next to my birthday. Like, it sucks. Mm-hmm. Because the idea of taking down all the holiday decorations mm-hmm. and my house just going back to looking like a fucking house yeah. is awful it's terrible because it's like uh i feel like every other season our house is so cool and wonderful but that's because it's fucking warm that's true. and so the fact that it's like freezing and then our house yeah. just turns into a regular house it's like no <laughs> dopamine you know what i yeah, mean like, there's like nothing <laughs> and so i think that like the idea because for me planning like figuring mm-hmm. out like what works best is like my favorite thing yeah it's what i loved about like competing in crossfit and c- competing in anything like mm-hmm. fitness wise wasn't the actual competition never give a shit right. it was like right after the competition this is how we can like make stuff better mm-hmm. um and so like that part i love so now i'm writing this new high of like hey how do we like iron out the kinks from this year yeah. to make sure that we don't have the same like oh fuck we didn't really like maximize the holiday season mm-hmm. but i say that as i'm still wearing a fucking ha- santa hat and a onesie hey you're so um, allowed to do that it's okay. But I'm taking the Santa hat to fucking... I figure I can wear it until New Year's at Fuck least. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, so it's going to Chicago. We went out to brunch and people were still doing Christmas gifts at brunch. So it's yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that the idea of like, instead of just being sad the day after, mm-hmm. is like essentially figuring out how to make next year better is another way to like trick that like drop in dopamine mm-hmm. to be like, ooh, now I have a new task. Yeah, and now I'm excited so. for next year because, like, we have, like, somewhat of a game plan. And then also schedule, like, another meeting before Christmas. Yeah, we'll do a follow-up meeting. Follow-up like, meeting. as a family, we'll probably have a meeting in about a week. Yeah. So that way we can all come down with physical lists. That's mm-hmm. the other thing. Yeah. Let me be really clear, like, to anyone who is, like, oh, I'm not a good organizer or, like, I'm not a good planner. So that's why you don't do it. First off, No. Mm-hmm. That doesn't fucking count. That's not an excuse anymore to be like, oh, I'm just not good at that. It really is not That's an like excuse. saying you're not good in bed, so you're never going to learn to be a better lover. Fuck off. Life is Literally. long, boo. You can learn to be a really good organizer. You can reinvent yourself any any day of the year, yeah. which we'll talk about in our next episode. So. Yeah, our New Year's episode will cover that. <laughs> um, but yeah, we want like 
taking time to write down that list of what really matters to you Mm -hmm. and then what would be cool. And then you're absolutely like, I don't care if anyone does this without me. I don't want to be part of that. Like I'm officially done with Christmas parties. I'm never going to another one again. I love that. I love that. Officially done. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. If that Christmas party happens in my own house, it is optional whether or not I go. Love that. Um, (laughs) Like I'm done officially. Yeah. That's it. Like fuck off. I will, I will help you decorate it. I will decorate it for you. And then I will leave before all the awkwardness happens. Yeah. Um, but yeah, having that list, I think is super important. And then just like having that conversation to tell people like why it's important. Cause I also think that that matters. Like that was my biggest takeaway from my conversation with Caboose Mm -hmm. was not that he doesn't know what matters, but he also doesn't know why it matters. Mm. And I think knowing your why is the biggest thing. Yes. Like, knowing, like, hey, why does this matter to me? Yep. Helps, like, other people around you also know the importance. So it's not just, like, hey, you are interested in baking cookies with us. But then knowing, like, the story of, like, yeah, his family would bake cookies. He yeah. wasn't a part of that, which I just, that's weird in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, for me, that was always, it was the hours you spent in the kitchen mm-hmm. creating together. Yeah. So, like, that has now transitioned into the rest of my life. So, like, when you're cooking in the kitchen, I love, like, even though I can't help you, sometimes I'm sous chef. Yeah. Um, and it's really I helpful. can just come over there and talk to you and be a part of it because I think of that as a very communal thing. Oh, my God. There is something so magical about that. I yeah. do love, I love sharing that. It is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So, then we're going to leave you guys with that. Mm-hmm. I hope this makes your boxing day just a little bit better. Yeah. Boxing um, day. That's yeah, what it's that's called. that's what today is. Sure. Um, <laughs> in in other countries, yeah, yes. it's Boxing Day. Um, and we hope that you had the best possible Christmas and or holiday season you could have had. But more importantly, we hope it's better next year. Yep. And that you distribute that labor. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. We love you. And we will see you next year. Bye. Bye. <laughs>